Today, uh, we are talking to Paul Smith, owner of Smith Music, about some of the measures that he has taken during the COVID-19 pandemic to still serve his customers, as well as some of the things he's doing to raise community spirits. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate uh, you having me on. So, Paul, how does things look? Uh, they look quite different for you now as they do for many of us in business, this being an example of it, uh, not having a face-to-face -face interview. Talk to me about uh, how you're getting on in business right now. Yeah, it's, uh, for as for everybody, very different right now. Um, Smith Music has been really fortunate uh, because of some of the video resources that we've had. Uh, we've been doing uh, video lessons for a number of years already. Um, so, um, 100% uh, of our clients are doing video lessons now um, where through Zoom, uh, exactly like Stephen and I are. And uh, we've been able to implement some um, uh, kind of bigger video strategies where we can share screens and sheet music over top of things. So that's been really fortunate for us. Um, but we have multiple parts to our business. So like uh, Mournville kind of knows us for a music teaching business, um, but we're also a commercial recording facility. So any recording that comes into the building, that's all stopped right now. We are still doing some that we do by um, web where people will email us or um, file transfer mixing for us to do. And um, the event portion of our business, we manage uh, a number of events uh, throughout the years. Um, and so this year we're going to have probably very, very little of that income. Uh, but I consider us very blessed. Uh, we have a really loyal clientele um, of uh, uh, Mournville and surrounding area. And I feel very fortunate to be in business in this town with the support that we have. Excellent. Ta talk to us about what the response has been from your students doing lessons over Zoom compared to uh, you being two feet away. Well, yeah, we, we've been very fortunate because I, we got a little bit ahead of the curve uh, on understanding what was going to happen. So that let us have conversations early with our clients where you know, we started talking about, you know, we're, we may go to video depending on what happens with COVID-19 as it was progressing. So people weren't shocked. It wasn't, uh, you know, this is the first time they're hearing about it and now they have to do it. And as things progressed, um, what, I, what we found is basically as soon as a person would do a video lesson, they would say, oh, I'm learning about the same amount of material. Uh, sure, it's not like sitting down with your teacher, but I can basically do the same thing. Um, and there is a few advantages to video lessons, uh, namely that I can record the lesson and send it to the student so they can watch it several times and pick up things that they missed. Um, so, you know, it's been a bit of an adjustment, but all in all, people are going, you know what? I can really do the same thing. As I know you put out a video on, you know, tuning the instruments to help parents. Yeah, actually, um, it's been surprisingly uh, simple. Over the years, the other video lessons that we've been doing for more pro and out-of-province clients, uh, these were people that had some musical skill, which it takes to be able to tune an instrument. So that was a logistical challenge. But basically, you know, I can hit a note on my side so I can hear, you know, my low E on a guitar, for example, and they can hit the same note on their side. And we'll have a parent, if it's a young child, we'll say, just go a little higher, go a little higher. And then we get it. It takes a few seconds and we move on and um, uh, sure you know we have heard a few twinkle twinkle little stars that are slightly more out of tune than normal um, and uh, that's not the most important thing in the very very beginning the tuning video that we you referenced um, is something that we put out because we're doing um, some free live stream lessons for parents that won't be able to interact with us directly on some strategies that they can use to tune their child's guitar now talk to me about that your entire Monday now uh, is no longer having coffee with local news guys. It's all about it's all about doing some stuff for community. So so talk to me about all of. Them. Yeah, the from my perspective on this, when this pandemic started to unfold. I needed, I knew there was going to be a psychological business component to this, as in the psychological impact of your entire business changing and the threat of losing, you know, your livelihood. It's all very, very scary. And for me, in order to mitigate my own fear, I knew I needed to give. So it's kind of selfish to keep myself in the frame of mind that is about giving. And, um, 
and it's been really well received where we're doing the uh, um, free guitar lessons for kids and also for adults. And it's been amazing for my own uh, psychological uh, health where, um, sure, I'm doing things to protect my business, but it's not my entire life isn't about that. I get to have a day a week where all I do is worry about helping other people and it lets me kind of get some psychological distance. So it's been wonderful feeling to give. It's been very well received and it was for selfish reasons um, <laughs> and, uh, to keep myself in the frame of mind that I needed to be on the other side of this because I don't want to be a business that survived. I want to be a business that um, gave back. And if, if I don't make it, which there's a possibility of that, we're doing okay right now. But if I don't make it, I want to be remembered as a business that gave as much as they could. Well said. So one o'clock, you have the children's free lesson. Three o'clock, you have the adult free lesson. Talk to me about two o'clock. So um, it's actually 3.30 for the adult lesson. Um, uh, and uh, the two o'clock portion is about business helping business. And I know, you know, the local music teacher um, uh, putting a live stream on, on about that is a little bit unusual. Um, there's a mastermind group that I've been fortunate enough to be in for the last, uh, um, it's, I think it's a year and a half. I say two years sometimes, but the guys correct me. So it's been about a year and a half um, where we've been helping each other to move our businesses online. So this was something that was already going. And um, these guys I really respect and they've been phenomenally helpful to my business over the years. And when this crisis hit, they saved my business um, for just the advice and keeping perspective for me. And I felt that, you know, if that was useful for me and we could put some information out there, it might help somebody else that's struggling. And it also could be just, you know, not somebody that is a current business owner, but also, um, you know, a mom or a dad that is looking for, you know, what are, what are people doing? You know, our business owners are also moms and dads with families and, and trying to do things. And really, if you start to run your home like a business now that's in a crisis mode, it's probably a pretty good idea. What are some of the things that you've talked about? I know you've done two segments. Uh, we're rebroadcasting those, if you will, on Morinville News the next day. Tell people what uh, what's been talked about in the first two. Yeah, so our first one was Lee Hodgins, who's um, an HR expert that has a list of credentials longer than my arm, uh, and he did a basic pandemic preparedness uh, um, plan, a uh, six-step plan, and then uh, Glenn um, uh, gave us a um, how to get go online quick. Um, and uh, so this is for businesses that have you know no online presence, and now the entire world is on online and how to get there uh, quick. And um, uh, Stephen, thank you for rebroadcasting uh, those live streams. That really means a lot to me uh, um, to uh, see if we can all pitch in together and help all of our local businesses survive. And for doing segments like this, because I think, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to learn from some other businesses that come on here and say, here's our strategies and what we're doing. And uh, I really appreciate that, Stephen. Uh, happy to do it. And so the last question, Paul, what would you say to other businesses in the community? I would say that right now what I'm focusing on are more than money and staying afloat is relationships. Relationships with my clients, relationships with friends. Um, uh, I've uh, reached out to a number of other businesses where I could see a need where maybe I could help. Um, and then just to other businesses to see how they're doing. And I think if we all kind of have that spirit of reaching out to each other and because we have a tremendous amount of business skill in Mournville where people can help each other and, um, you know, uh, helping out your uh, fellow business owner, they're probably going to look at you and say, Hey, I can do this, this, and this for you. I think we can really all make each other stronger in this time. And, uh, and, you know, direct contact often with clients um, that's meaningful and, uh, um, you know, concern and making sure that we can really look after. I think that's the most important thing to do with this and the money will take care of itself. It's scary but it will take care of itself. Thanks, Paul. I really appreciate you taking time to uh, be the first person that we interview in this series. Uh, we're going to talk to you, try to do three of these per week. Stephen, I think this is a great initiative. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.